Nicaragua. What a journey. It, it was a complete movie. Uh, God moved in so many ways, and I just want to share with you a few ways that he did. Um, first, I want to point out the community that we had. Uh, the teamwork that we had going into this was incredible. There was no drama, no nothing, and there was 60 teenagers going on the same trip, and that sounds like a drama fest. But we were able to just keep it together, and we all had one goal in mind, which was being the hands and feet of Jesus in this village. And I just, and just the village itself, Carlos Fonseca. Like many villages in Nicaragua, this village has been hit with poverty. Right when we turned into the village, the houses were made of, I mean, anything that you could find on the side of the street. Cardboard, sheet metal, dirt floors. Uh, their fences were just made of like twigs and barbed wire. Not only were they in need of physical things, but they also just needed Jesus. Yes, they had a church, but a lot of them were discouraged because because most, they, were, they grew up Catholic, so they didn't believe that Jesus had the free gift of salvation. They thought they had to work for it. So that's why we were there. We were there to remind them that, hey, salvation is a free gift. And I was able to pour into two families specifically. Martina, uh, we ran into her the first day on Monday. I asked us to pray for her son, uh, Louis, that had been struggling with addiction problems. And I was able to speak to her and say, hey, I, I struggled with drug addiction as well for three and a half years of my life. And if he can save, if God can save me, he can save your son as well. Later that week, we ran into her and she said that he showed up three times that week after we prayed for her. Um, and we were just art, and she wanted us to pray over her again. And it was just a great sign that God was already moving um, in her situation. And um, another family that I was able to pour into uh, was Brian. He was a 13-year-old boy. I was able to meet most of his family. But I met, I met him during our construction day, and we just, we just clicked, man. We, uh, we played rock, paper, scissors more, th more than we did anything else that week. Um, but I was able to meet his family, his uh, mother and aunts. His aunt went up to my leader and informed her that he's been sip, uh, skipping school and they wanted me to talk to him about it. So I was able to just pour into him and say, hey, you've been given these opportunities, uh, an opportunity for an education. You've been placed in a village with an amazing church and you can get plugged into that church and have a relationship with not only Jesus, but with fellow Christians. And that's something you can't take for granted. It's a thing that can shape you for the rest of your life. And, and I could tell my words hit him hard. Um, he definitely reconsidered. Um, and I'm very glad that I was able to speak to him and Martina in a very impactful way. That was the main ways that I was used that week. And um, I just pray that what God did there would um, just set a foundation for not only that village, but for other missionaries that will come and impact that village as well, that they can just build on top of what we set there. Thank God for using me and the 60 other teenagers that went. And um, yeah, thanks for watching.